Well, I've been talking lots about Boeing, and uh, some of it I hope was interesting. It would be my take on, on Boeing. Uh, different people have different ideas. I can certainly happily share with you my ideas about the left hand. Uh, that would be sort of two, two parts, wouldn't it? Because one is fingering, and the other is shifting the fingers. Shifting is enormous on the bass, because I can't think of another instrument that has the size of shifts of the bass. Uh, maybe the trombone. But anyway, um, left hand. Now, how should we hold our, our hand? I can remember my teacher once, bless him, he, my teacher, he, he, we were talking and he, he let go of the bass. It was a priceless Italian bass. And it, it came my way. I went up. He said, you know, that's the right hand position. So <laughs> it was like that. And if you think about it, that's natural. I grabbed the bass. Now, if we refine that slightly, if we refine it slightly, let me turn around so you can see this thumb here. If we refine that slightly, I'm just going to pull my thumb here and straighten my fingers up. I've got a nice hand position, a relaxed one. Like Boeing, I want to use the weight of my back and arm to power the left hand. There are some schools I know that go first finger back and thumb in the middle of the neck. I'm not sure I agree with that because I'm, I can weigh on these fingers, but I'm obliged to push on my first finger, which is the most important one in a way to the base. We add from it and subtract to it. So if I'm here, I've got quite a natural thing to hang on. So that's where, to me, that's where the hand position starts. Then we talk about evenly spacing the fingers so that they get semitones wherever we are. Let me turn the bass around here. So we want to get semitones. Any other position is not going to help us any because, because of course, I would be out of tune. I need to get the fingers so that they land in the right place. Uh, some... The Italians, Bottasini played like this. He did uh, like that. But they had very long necks that came to about here. So they could play one, four. Uh, I think one, two probably would be difficult in this area. But he used one, three up here and one, four down here. Uh, he says in the book, even if you want to play a chromatics, you could use your third finger. And the whole Italian idea and Southern European playing grew from one three four, which is quite is is different of course. I use one two four. Uh, I know my teacher's teacher changed from this to that. But um, and he kept his third finger in some places. For example, some uh, some uh, first position things are easier with three. Uh, is easier with the third finger. Why? I think Robert Schumann ruined his career as a pianist because he was trying to get in the more independence, even invented a machine, I understand, uh, to get more independence between three and four. Two and four is one thing. One and four is something. Three and four is more difficult. I'm no doctor. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. I suspect that these two aren't some kind of tendon sharing. And that's what I understand. So uh, well, you've got one, two, four is what I use. But uh, as I say, most of the Southern European influence schools use one, three. Uh, does it matter? Well, we just have to accommodate fingering for whichever fingering style we're using. Uh, I'll tell you what else is fun. One, three for semitone is semitone trills. I find that more difficult than one, three, probably because I'm throwing a longer tendon. Anyway. Uh, I want my hand to be nicely, evenly spaced. Uh, I don't want this finger to be back because I can't hang weight on that. So I like a little bit of a hook, a little bit. So it's slightly hooked downwards and is easy to put weight on with my thumb on the opposite side of the neck. Uh, I would think about hanging on this finger. Now, very often I ask students, so could... Can you lift my first finger? Well, I put all the weight I have on it, <laughs> cheating a bit. And uh, anyway, uh, I asked them to lift the finger. Well, they can't do it because I've got my whole back and arm hanging down on my finger. 
Now I say, oh, we'll try it again. Well, I move the weight to my second finger, and of course, it's easy to lift my first finger. And then I could do the same thing again and move it to my fourth finger. Well, you can't see it from the front. You can only feel it where the weight is going. So I think fingering is a lot the idea of moving weight. Now, when we talk about weight, you know, like the bow arm, I, I usually don't need all the weight I have in my arm and back for the bowing. And I don't, the same is very true for the left hand because we must finger, but we also must shift and no other instrument shifts like the bass. So we must be able to shift very quickly and accurately. So I'm going to want a hand position that I don't overpress. Some people say you have to press. There's an old English school that said you have to press very hard to get the intonation. Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think intonation comes from your ear to your finger, but, but um, uh, you, you're not going to get... There is, there is one side to it, which I'll come back to in about a second. But first of all, let's just, let's talk about... Mm -hmm. 